Okay, we're going to start part three of cosmetology chemical texture service. So we were just talking about doing perms. So now we're going to talk about perm safety precautions. So you're going to want to protect the client's clothing, determine um, an allergic reaction, hair and scalp analysis, determine the extent of the damage, determine prior hydroxide relaxers, perform metallic salt tests, and apply protective barrier cream. Um, so when they're saying determining these things, you're going to be asking them, you know, if, if they've ever had a perm before, have they had any of these happen to them? Um, you're going to always use the perm as directed by the manufacturer's label. Keep the solution away from eyes and skin. Always follow the manufacturer's directions. Wear gloves when applying solutions. Replace wet cotton or towels with dry cotton or towels. Discard unused products. Don't try to use, you know, whatever's left over and save it. No, it doesn't work that way. It won't work anymore. So just throw it away if there's anything that's unused. Um, shampoo and condition with products for chemically treated hair. And that's really important. You can't shampoo or condition hair after it's been permed for at least 48 hours. <clears throat> So metallic salts, okay. So this is on page six, uh, 16. Um, metallic sal salts are not um, compatible with permanent waving. Um, they leave a coating on the hair that may cause uneven curls, severe discoloration, or hair breakage. Metallic salts are more commonly found in men's hair colors that are sold for home use. Okay, so metallic salts, um, some hair coloring, some home hair coloring products contain metallic salts that are not compatible with um, permanent waving. Um, metallic salts are more commonly found in men's hair colors um, than in women's hair colors. Hair color uh, restores and progressive hair colors um, that are that darken the hair gradually with repeated applications are the most likely to contain metallic salts. So like just for men probably has it, um, that sort of a thing. Um, if you suspect that metallic salts may be present on the hair, perform the following test. And this is on page 617. In a glass or plastic bowl, mix one ounce of 20 volume peroxide with 20 drops of 28% ammonia. Immerse at least 20 strands of hair in the solution for 30 minutes. If metallic salts are not present, the hair will lighten slightly and you may proceed with the service. If metallic salts are present, the hair will lighten rapidly and the solution may get hot and give off an unpleasant odor indicating that you should not proceed with the service. So now we're gonna talk about chemical hair relaxers. So chemical hair relaxing is the process of rearranging the basic structure of extremely curly hair into a straighter or smoother form. The types of chemical hair relaxers include ammonium thi sorry, ammonium thio, guan, I was, guanidine hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. Extremely curly hair grows in long twisted spirals or coils. Cross sections are highly um, elliptical. They vary in shape and thickness along their lengths. The thinnest and weakest sections are located at the twists. The main ingredient of thio relaxers, so now we're going to talk about thio relaxers. The main ingredient is ammonium thioglycolate, ATG. They usually have a pH above 10. So that's super alkalinic. Okay, these are extremely strong products. They usually have a higher concentration of ATG, ammonium thioglycolate. They have a thicker viscosity, so they're thicker, and they break the disulfide bonds and soften hair. 
thioneutralization. So the neutralization used with thiorelaxers is an oxidizing agent, usually hydroxide, hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so the neutralizing that's used with thiorelaxers is an oxidizing agent, usually hydrogen peroxide. The oxidation reaction is caused by the neutralizer that rebuilds the disulfide bonds that were broken by the thiorelaxer. So it's similar to the perm, the perm wave, um, and sorry, the uh, waving solution and the thio kind of do the same thing. And then the neutralizer um, in both the, the thio neutralization and the perm neutralizer, um, they kind of do the same thing. They, um, they rebuild the, di the disulfide bonds that were broken by, in this case, the thio relaxer, in the perm's case, by the waving uh, lotion. So follow the same, so thio relaxer application, you're going to follow the same preparation steps as virgin hydroxide relaxers, with the possible exception of a light shampoo before a thio relaxer. Do not forget to perform an analysis of the client's hair and scalp. That's so important, guys. You want to make sure because this is so strong, you want to make sure that you really look at the scalp and and see that there's no um, abrasions or you know anything um, indicating that the hair is really damaged too. Um, you wouldn't want to do this on 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 hair that's damaged or on um, or on broken skin. Test the hair for elasticity and porosity on several areas of the head. If the hair has poor elasticity, do not perform a relaxer service. So if you can pull a strand and it doesn't go back to its original um, length, you know that it's the, um, the elasticity is not very good. Um, and I'm going to tell you what page this is on. So this is on page 618. It starts on page 618. So now we'll talk about Japanese uh, thermal straighteners. Um, the hair is shampooed and conditioned. The straightener is distributed evenly. The hair is processed to desired curl reduction. And the hair is thoroughly rinsed for about 10 minutes. The hair is conditioned and blown dry and sections are flat ironed. Hair is neutralized and blown dry. Okay. So now we'll talk about hydroxide relaxers. So some examples of hydroxide relaxers are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, and guanidine hydroxide. They are not compatible with thio relaxers. If a client has had a thio relaxer, you can't um, use a hydroxide relaxer until that hair is completely grown out and cut off. Then you can use a hydroxide relaxer. Um, hydroxide relaxers have a pH of 13 or more. So these are the big boys. These are the ones that are almost as alkalinic as you could possibly be. Um, and now we're gonna talk about something called lanthionization. So hydroxide relaxers break the disulfide bonds differently than the reduction reaction of thio relaxers. A disulfide bond consists of two bonded sulfur atoms. That's a disulfide bond. Um, in lanthionization, um, the process by which the hydroxide relaxers permanently straighten the hair, the relaxers move a sulfur atom from the disulfide bond and convert it into a lanthionine bond. Lanthionine bonds contain only one sulfur atom. The disulfide bonds that are broken by hydroxide relaxers 
um, are broken permanently and can never be reformed. That is why hair that has been treated with a hydroxide relaxer is unfit for permanent waving and will not hold a curl. Okay. So now we're gonna talk about some types of hydroxide relaxers. So we have metal hydroxide relaxers. So these have ionic compounds that are formed by a metal, such as sodium, potassium, or lithium, that is combined with oxygen and hydrogen. Metal hydroxide relaxers include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and lithium hydroxide. The active ingredient in these hydroxide relaxers is, hydro is the hydroxide ion. So some more hydroxide relaxers. There's also lye-based relaxers. Um, those are sodium hydroxide relaxers, also known as caustic soda. They're the oldest and most common type of um, relaxers. They're the same chemical, or one of the same chemicals that's in them is also used in drain cleaners and chemical hair uh, depilatories. So um, a, a common um, ingredient is in Drano that is in these lye-based hydroxide relaxers. So you think it's uh, strong? Yep, it is. No lye relaxers are the lithium hydroxide and pot, uh, potassium hydroxide, often sold as no mix, no lye relaxers. So even though it's not a lye, the chemistry is identical and there's little difference in their performances. So you want to be careful. They market these to seem like they're more gentle than a regular hydroxide relaxer because it's a no lye relaxer, but uh, it kind of is a lie <laughs> um, because uh, it's it's actually almost exactly the same, and it's definitely as strong. So we'll talk about guanidine um, hydroxide relaxers, also sold as no lie relaxers. Um, these hydrox the hydroxide ion is the active ingredient. They require two components to be mixed. They straighten the hair completely. There's less scalp irritation. Um, you can use these on people with sensitive scalps. Um, it does not reduce the hair damage. It's actually more drying to the hair. The low pH relaxers, ammonium sulfite and ammonium bisulfite are the most commonly used. Um, they're compatible with thio. They're not compatible with hydroxide. They do not completely straighten extremely curly hair. They would just more soften the curl. And they can be used on color treated, damaged, or fine hair. So um, low, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about low pH relaxers. Um, they, well, I already told you that they don't um, completely straighten the hair. Um, and they are, um, intended for use on color treated, damaged, or fine hair. And um, if you want to know more about all of these, page 621 has a table 20 2, and it's how to select the co correct um, relaxer. And okay, so that's all I'm really going to say about that one. So base and no base relaxer. So the base requires an application of the base cream to protect the skin and scalp during relaxing. The no base do not require a protective base cream since they are already, they already contain a base cream that melts at body temperature and protective cream may be applied around the ears or hairline. So basically what a base is, is it's the same thing as protective cream. So the base uh, base cream or um, protective base cream, it's the same as protective cream, okay? Some of them have it built in. Oh, this is the table that I was telling you about on page 621, table 20-2 for selecting the correct relaxer.
So um, it talks about the active ingredients, what the pH is, um, what it's marketed as, the advantages and the disadvantages. So relax our strengths. We have mild, we have regular, and we have super. So mild is formulated for fine, color-treated, or damaged hair. Regular is intended for normal hair texture with medium natural curl. And super is used for maximum strengthening on extremely curly, coarse hair. Okay, and we're going to stop here.